What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hardley and in this video I want to share with you how to find good companies and good stocks to invest in. If you get any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button. Let's jump right in. Okay, so in this video, I'm basically going to walk you through how I choose my own personal stocks. And this strategy is basically put together on a couple of years of my own personal experience, as well as my experience after taking and reviewing like five or six different trading and investing courses. If you want to see any of those reviews, they're on my channel here. But what I'm going to do in this video is basically summarize all of the best points plus what I have learned just through my own personal experience. I'm gonna try and put it into a couple minute video here so that you can better understand maybe how to think about what stocks and what companies you wanna invest in. So here's the overview of my process here. Basically, we always wanna start with the big picture and work your way down to an individual company. Now what I mean by that is we are first gonna choose what country we wanna invest in and then what industry we wanna invest in and then we're gonna compare the companies within that industry to try and find the one that's gonna be the best fit for our portfolio. Now, throughout the rest of the video, basically what I'm gonna do is kinda of detail these three steps for you and the things that I am looking for and watching for, starting with the country that we wanna invest in. Basically, what we're trying to choose here is what country do we want to invest into and then we'll buy the companies that exist in the industry in that country. And the reason this is really important is because stable countries with good currencies offer stable environments for companies to grow. So for instance, if you're trying to grow a very large software company or a product company, it's really nice if you have a stable government and a stable currency to work with, because then all you have to worry about is yourself and your own forecasts. You don't have to worry about currency fluctuations or the laws changing or who's gonna be in power in six months. And it basically gives a better environment for a company to grow. And it means that, that, that your investment is gonna have a better chance of giving you a better ROI. Now, things like war and inflation and environmental disasters usually make it difficult for companies to grow in certain regions. And so some examples of what this looked like on the good side could be Canada and the USA. We have fairly stable environments for companies to grow. Our currencies are fairly stable. Our governments are fairly stable. And we have a 50 to 100 year track record of pretty stable operations in these countries. Now, obviously, we go through highs and lows and there's ups and downs, but in general, Canada and the USA, as well as Europe and Australia, have been fairly stable places to invest your money and for large companies and corporations to grow. Now, on the other side of this, we have a current event going on right now. Uh, as I make this video, it's March 1st, 2022, and we have a major, major conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. Russia is trying to invade Ukraine, and because of that, basically the entire world world has put sanctions on Russia and those sanctions are extremely bad for business which is why you have seen the currency in Russia absolutely collapse and you have also seen a lot of company stocks absolutely collapse because they're no longer allowed to export they don't have demand for their products anymore there's tariffs everywhere and it just makes life in Russia extremely extremely difficult and it makes doing business in Russia extremely extremely difficult which means anybody invested in Russia probably isn't doing so well over the last two weeks. So just for those examples, that is the reason that we start with the big picture and that's why you choose to invest in countries that are stable and have good currencies. For me personally, I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, so I invest most of my money in Canada and the USA. If you lived in Europe, I'd assume it'd probably be something similar to that. If you lived in Australia, you might be investing all over the world. Probably right now, you're not investing in Russia, and as we've seen over the last six months, China has been a very volatile place to invest as well. So there's a lot of different things you wanna think about here, but for these major factors here, this is the reason that we start with the big picture and we start by choosing what country we want to invest in. Now, once you have identified a country that you want to invest in, the next thing is to choose an industry that you want to invest in. And the one, the one quote that just rings so true about this factor here is this one right here is that a rising tide floats all boats or maybe it's lifts all boats. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong about this quote here, but, but you get the idea here is that 
as the water comes up, all of the boats start to float and it's good for all of the boats. And basically what I'm saying here is that if an industry is taking off, like let's say it was cannabis two or three years ago where everything in cannabis was skyrocketing because the regulations and the legislation was coming out to legalize it, that was a rising tide. The government of Canada was allowing and the US government is starting to allow legalization of cannabis. That is a rising tide for all cannabis companies. Now, well, that's really nice because it means that that industry is growing and it has supporting factors. That's basically what we're looking for here is a rising tide is an industry that is growing and that has supporting factors. What you don't want is you don't want to buy into companies or industries that are declining. That's what we want to stay away from is any industries that are declining. So think about Blockbuster and the, and the movie rental business 20 years ago. Think about Kodak Film. Think about tobacco companies. They're not doing as well as they once were. Think about all of those industries that are just slowly getting phased out. We want to try and avoid those industries. So a good example here of an industry that you may want to get into is solar. The reason you may want to get into solar is because it is growing year over year. Basically every metric of solar is growing year over year and there are a lot of environmental benefits to it and that also means that governments are supporting it and so solar is growing year over year which is great and there's a lot of basically tailwind to this industry because the government wants it the environmentalists want it it's good for the earth it's good for the environment there's a lot of good things about solar now on the other side of that is film photography think of kodak kodak was the giant back in the day any t piece of film that you got developed was probably made by kodak and it's absolutely crazy but what happened at kodak is that their tide basically started to go out and things started to shift to digital the money and everything and the attention went to digital and film got left behind. It was basically left out to dry in the sun. The tide had drifted away from it and there was no reason to stay with film. And so that was an industry that you definitely don't want to be in. And so definitely something to consider is, is the tide coming in or is the tide going out for your industry? Because you want your boat to be going up either way. That's the goal here when you choose an industry. I think solar is really good. I think cybersecurity is really good. I think battery uh, materials and battery supplies and battery manufacturing is really, really good. I think quantum computing is really good. And uh, those are the industries that I'm investing in. A lot of tech and a lot of growth industries is where I put my own personal money. And then what you need to do once you've identified an industry. So for us, it was the solar industry. That's what I used in the last example. You need to do a breakdown of that industry depending on its size and what I mean by that is when we say the solar industry well there's a lot of different kind of sub niches or sub categories of the solar industry for instance you got a variety of different solar panel manufacturers you also have a variety of different companies that install solar panels either on residential or commercial properties and then you also have solar farm operators the guys that just buy truckloads of solar panels and set them up in fields that's a completely different industry and business model than it is from manufacturing solar panels and then on top of that you also have the guys that are like the third party people that service it that maintain it and that offer parts or just sell the products so even within just the solar industry, we have a variety of different types of kind of like subcategories that we need to separate this into. And the reason that we need to separate it is because you cannot compare a solar farm operator to a solar panel manufacturer. Those are two completely separate business models. They are very, very different margins. They have very different strategic requirements and advantages, and they're not very good comparisons. So what you need to do is you need to kind of break this down further and say, okay, I I want to specialize in solar farm operators for example and once you've identified that then that's when you can start comparing companies so for us if we are looking at solar farm operators probably the number one factor that i want to know right away is how big is their current operations and how much power does their current solar farm generate that's probably the number one factor that i want to know right off the bat once i start to compare these companies after that i want to know how quickly they're growing and what their strategy is to grow in the future do they pay a dividend? It feels like solar is a fairly steady uh, kind of cash flow stream. So I would be expecting a dividend from this kind of industry. And then I want to make sure they have enough uh, cash and runway and a healthy balance sheet to facilitate that dividend. And I want to look at their price to earnings ratio so that we can compare this company to other companies in the industry. And so if I was looking at solar farm operators, these are the ratios and the things that I would be looking at. But for instance, if I was looking at a solar panel installation company, 
I would definitely not be looking at the size and the power of their farm. I probably wouldn't be looking at the dividend yield and I'd be surprised if they were making money right now so the price to earnings may not apply. Maybe I want to look at the price to sales ratio and so what's really important here is that you're using the appropriate ratios and the appropriate metrics to actually evaluate and compare these companies. Now, here is an example of some of the research I've done in the past. Right here on the top left, I was looking at quantum computing and the main factor here was revenue. What is the projected revenue over the next three years for these computer companies because none of them are making money. They're not gonna make any money really anytime soon, but they are signing contracts which represent revenue. So I can basically make decisions based off of that. Now down here, I was looking at Caterpillar and John Deere, two kind of heavy equipment uh, companies. And here I was looking at the dividend. So you can see my number one factor here was the dividend yield and then the payout ratio and then the revenue growth. I was looking at the balance sheet right here and I was also looking at the dividend growth over the last years. So Caterpillar has been paying and continuing their dividend to grow for 28 years, but John Deere is at 33 years. And so these are the different metrics I was looking at when comparing these two companies. And then over here, I was looking at these online education platforms, which again is completely different than the other two comparisons over here. And so here I was actually looking at the revenue last quarter and the quarter over quarter revenue growth. I was looking at the price to sales and the gross profit margins. I was looking at net income, total assets and liabilities. And I was looking at the float and how the share structure is set up. And so you really need to basically go from the big picture all the way down and then you need to think about what metrics and what factors are really important to the companies that I'm about to look at. And then once you have those metrics and factors, you need to do your research, you need to fill in your spreadsheets and then you need to decide which one is a better fit for your portfolio. Caterpillar has a higher dividend yield, but John Deere has a lower payout ratio, meaning that they're probably gonna be able to maintain and increase their dividend better over time than Caterpillar. And so lots of different factors, and it basically depends on what type of investor you are and what you're looking for in your portfolio. But summary here is you need to start with the big picture. You need to remember that a rising tide lifts all bloats, lifts, floats all boats, I don't know what it is, but you also need to compare the things that matter. So once you've found a country, you found an industry, you've narrowed down that industry, you need to make sure you're comparing the factors that matter. If the company doesn't produce earnings and isn't profitable, you probably can't compare the price to earnings ratio. You probably need to step it up to the price to sales ratio. So you need to keep those things in mind. You need to make sure that you understand not only the business and how they make money, but what other factors will affect that business. For instance, will the Russian-Ukraine conflict affect your business? Would another COVID affect your business? Different things like that and how they impact your business also make a large, large impact on what companies you're gonna buy because you need to be well educated on them. And speaking of that, if you're interested in learning more, I have a completely free course that will walk you through everything you need to know. And when you sign up with the link down below, it's completely free. You get two weeks of free access. The course is only 10 hours long, so it's really easy to do. There's over 11,000 students and there's 380 reviews for you to take a read through. There's 1.6 million minutes of watch time and the course is completely free because it's hosted on Skillshare. So you sign up, you create an account, you get a free trial, cancel that free trial when you're done. Doesn't matter, it won't cost you a single penny. The link is in the description and I promise you it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. I put it together myself and, uh, and you can read the reviews to check it out. Now, if you got any value out of this video, please remember to click that like and subscribe button. I'm trying to summarize all the important facts here so that you have a nice, easy way to understand it and then apply it to your trading and investing. So please show some love, show some support, and I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon.